Mark 3, 5, and when he had looked round about on them with anger, being grieved for the hardness of their hearts, Jesus is looking at the Pharisees, the religious leaders of the day, being grieved for the hardness of their hearts. We're talking about the religious leaders of the day. When it uses this word anger, it means anger at a white hot pitch. But for the love of God, Jesus Christ would have atomized them on the spot. Anger. Deceitfulness of sin causes the hardened heart the hardened heart causes the loss of fear of God and religious form causes the hardened heart. I'm going to tell you now who I have more trouble with than anyone else. I've been talking about the pornographers and I've called them everything in the book, but I don't have as much trouble out of them are the homosexuals, are the drug pushers, are the beer distributors, as I do out of religion. Religion, Jesus looked about them with anger. Do you realize in most churches in America you couldn't get saved if you wanted to? Do you realize in most churches in America if you raised a hand and said hallelujah, they throw you out? Do you realize in most churches in America, if you came up and told the pastor, I want you to anoint me with oil and pray for me, he'd look at you like you have taken leave of your senses? Did you know that in most churches in America, you can drink and adulterate and fornicate and swine and swill and swill and whine and be a member in good standing, but once you get baptized in the Holy Ghost uh, with the power of God Almighty, with the evidence of speaking with other tongues, uh, and you quit your fornicating, and you quit your drinking, and you quit your cursing, and you quit your rot, and you fall in love with the Bible, and you get full of the Holy Ghost, and you fall in love with Jesus Christ, they'll throw you out, they'll throw you out. I don't go to ball games, but if I did, I would expect them to play ball. And if I go to church, I expect you to preach. I expect the power of all not a God. Mark 6. Mark 6, 52, he's with his disciples now. He's with his disciples, Peter, James, John, Matthew, Bartholomew, Thomas. For they considered not the miracle of the loaves, Mark 6, 52, for their heart was hardened. That is one of the sins of Pentecost today. I'm going to tell you something. This is going to shock you. They had seen so many miracles. 
that they were hardened to them. They didn't think anything about it. Their hearts were hardened. In 1906, on Azusa Street in Los Angeles, California, where the great moving of the Holy Ghost took place at the turn of the century, a prophecy was given. 1906, as I preach this message, that is over three quarters of a century ago. In the midst of the greatest outpouring to date the world had ever known, prophecy was given that was so astounding that most thought it's impossible. This is what the prophecy said. It was in three parts. It said, in the last days, just before the return of Christ, in Pentecostal circles, there will be an overemphasis on power rather than righteousness. Number two, there will be an emphasis on praise to a God they no longer pray to. You hear me? Notice our churches, we specialize in praise. Is praise wrong? God forbid, no. But you cannot cover barren intercession with a public display of empty praise. Pentecostal and charismatic churches have become professionals at the art of praise. It has become an art form. Today, until we bring choreographed dancers on the stage, and they dance according to instructions from a choreographer in Pentecostal and charismatic churches. As the minister is preaching or the singers are singing, we've learned to praise, but we've forgotten to pray. But true praise can only come out of a heart of true prayer. The third part of that prophecy was there would be an emphasis on the gifts, an emphasis on the gifts of the Spirit rather than the Lordship of Christ. I want you to ask for mighty Holy Ghost conviction to sweep this place mighty convicting power of the Holy Ghost to break through the hardness, break through the unbelief, break through the resistance. And I'm going to ask you to come from the very top, way at the back. I want you to come. I want you to come to this front. Every one of you that raised your hands, you must come. There's room. 